What is the scariest part about living in a bus? It was my first audiobook, and that was fun. And I was like, you're kidding. I need that in my life. Old OSU lore. I have tried, guys. My frontal lobe has not even developed yet. How am I supposed to know what I want to do? I'm doing dishes in the dishwasher. So that's what that noise was. But I am still in my PJs. Long story short, we had to come to Brittany and Zach's house today because we're expecting a package that needs to be signed for. And Cohen has to work. We only have one car. So he's upstairs getting ready for work. I'm about to make breakfast, but I'm gonna hang out here. The dogs are here with me and we're just gonna be here all day waiting for the package so I can sign for it. We're gonna make an impromptu, what is it called? Omelet. I have quite literally never made an omelet before in my entire life. So... Now we want some garlic. I don't know how you guys see anything in here. This is their spice drawer, right? How do you know what each spice is? Like you gotta like pick them all up. That's kind of annoying if you ask me. Honestly, a little chipotle chili pepper might be good in that. I really am just winging this. Oh, everything but the bagel seasoning. Hi, Bella. <laughs> Guy Paul. Oh, that's a good ball. Other ball? No, oh, thank you so much. So basically, we're doing a house vlog today. We're gonna make an omelet. We're gonna hang out here. I have a lot of work to get done, so I brought like my whole desktop computer. We're just posted up. I gotta like scramble them, don't I? You would think that I would look up instructions, right? Wrong. Old OSU lore. I used to live in Seabert Hall when I was a freshman at OSU and there was a dining hall close to there that we would always go to because um, it's like buffet style. And there was an omelet station and I loved going to the omelet station. So I feel like I could do this just from like, I don't know, watching them enough times, but probably not. I rummaged through the kitchen, of course. So we have eggs, we have the seasonings, I have sharp cheddar. We're gonna do some ham. I would normally do a Colby Jack, that's a superior shredded cheese, but they don't have Colby Jack. And then I found some peppers. So we can like cut up some peppers, but that's about it. Nothing like too, too fancy. We're working with what we got. Little ham bits, cheese. Now I know that there's something like special in the way that you have to like tilt it and let all the runny eggs go underneath it so that you're like fully cooking it. You know what I mean? Am I doing it right? I don't know. And then they flip it over, right? <gasps> oh, did I do it? And then they pour and flip. I made my first omelet. That smells good. This one's mine. Cohen insisted that he make his own omelet. I'm trying to help. What is that? It's a scramble omelet. Oh my gosh. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. That's what looks good though. No. Is it good? Uh-huh. Mine was tasty too. Ah! Get down. Cohen officially left work. So we're gonna shower in like a real shower and not just a campsite shower. that I made. I love their espresso machine. That is one that I want in the bus. However, it is a good six or $700, maybe even more. But every time I'm here, I have to make a little, little coffee. And now we have six hours to get some work done essentially until Cohen's off of work. I've already switched one load of laundry into the dryer, got the second load in the washer. Our dishes are done. Like we're cranking, it is 1 p.m. And I have unfortunately a lot of stuff to do today as far as like my other job. So I have a lot of truck things to do. And then I also picked up actually another like freelance position that I can do virtually from the road. And so I have some social media marketing kind of things to do for them. And it will take me probably that whole time, which is kind of unfortunate because I also wanted to rough edit a vlog of mine today, but I just don't think we're gonna get there. I literally just got all situated to work. Yeah, and then the doorbell rang. Yeah, and you guys went into full protection mode. But the whole reason why I came here, like I said in the beginning, was because we were waiting on a package that I had to sign for. <laughs> and it's here and it's heavy. This guy right here, 
Victron Energy, so you guys already know it's for our electric system. We'll talk about her later. Look who's home. Yeah, Bella. It is 6.12. Cohen got off work early, but since he's home early, I'm done working early and I'm starving and we're gonna make some dinner. While we do that, I thought we could do a little Q&A because during Vlogtober that I never got to finish, I put on my stories to do a Q&A. We usually try to do one every time we do like Vlogtober, Vlogmas and stuff like that. And I have not filmed those questions yet. So let's do that. With very minimal options, we've decided on mac and cheese and chicken nuggets in the air fryer. That's what we got going on. I started my water to boil so we can work our way through these questions in no particular order as usual. I also got chips and queso for the snack while we cook dinner. Starting off this Q&A with a bang because it's probably the most asked question that I get every single day. That is where are the pup dates been missing them? I also feel like as many times as I get asked it, I also answer it all the time and then I still get questions about it. But I feel like the people asking aren't watching these Q&As when I talk about it. <laughs> but life has been busy the past like, I don't know, two years since we got Bela. I have not had time to make content solely for the dog channel. The hope is to get back to it. I think I've also gone back and forth between do I even keep posting on the dog channel or just post the pup dates here if I were to record them again. So I don't know, guys. Your girl's busy. There's a lot going on, okay? <laughs> There's also been a ton of questions about the wedding planning and where we've been at with the wedding, baby. <laughs> we have no fucking idea, guys. We have not even started planning it. I have tried, guys. We got other things that we gotta do first. You'll know when we know. I just need to finish the bus, okay? We need the bus to be, we need our home to be complete before I can even think about planning a wedding. This person said that they realized that they suck at budgeting. Where would they start? I could talk for days about budgeting and like my system of budgeting, which is the cash envelope system. Literally go to my channel, go to the search bar, look up cash envelope system. And there's probably 20 videos that I've made over the years since college up till now of how I use that system and why it works for me and why I love it so much. I feel like that's where I would start identifying why you're bad at budgeting. Like what is it about budgeting that you feel like you are not good at? Is it the actual planning out of a budget? Is it sticking to the budget? Is it just knowing what to budget for? Like what area do you think you're lacking in? And then research that. What collars and leashes are your current favorites for the doggos? I am gonna skip this one mainly because I got a previous comment asking to do like a whole haul or tour, I guess, of everything that we have on the bus for the dogs. So I'll be filming that soon actually. We'll do like a full breakdown of everything that we have for the dogs in the bus. I love the questions that are mainly asking for like advice, like how to handle work stress, but that one is so broad that it's hard to just throw in this like fun little q and I feel like that's something that Alexis and I can talk about on the podcast soon and actually give you guys like our full tips or breakdown. But I think for right now, I'm a like at the root type of person. So if you ask me any question or you have any problem at all, I'm going to ask you like, well, what is the root of that? Or like, why do you feel that way? So immediately you're like, how do I handle work stress? I'd be like, well, what is causing you stress? What about it? Kind of with the budgeting thing. What exactly are you stressed about? Because we can't fix it unless we identify where the stress is coming from. If it's the people that you work with, is it your workload? Is it the money? Is it the commute? Is it the company? Is it your values? Like what exactly is stressing you out about work? I need that info before we can dive deeper. And also speaking of, I'm gonna do a little shameless plug here because Alexis and I do have a Let's Unpack That series on the podcast where we really dive deep into questions or asking for advice and stuff. So I will link the form down below that you guys can like fill out if you have something like that that you wanna give us like so much information for and we can actually unpack it with you. This one is a book check. So we're at like a little checkpoint here where we need to ask some questions about some books. I'd love it if you guys could comment down below and answer them as well. What has been your favorite book so far in 2024? What is the most recent book that you read in 2024? And then what's your least favorite book of 2024? I haven't done that much reading this year. So current book that I'm reading is The Fake Out by Stephanie Archer. It's a nice little hockey romance and that's what we're reading for the book club currently. That's the only book that I'm reading or have read this year other than I did listen to Fourth Wing on audio book to try to get myself back into reading even though I read fourth wing paperback last year so I guess I could say my favorite was fourth wing like listening to it on the audiobook definitely changed it it was my first audiobook and that was fun but that also means I don't really have a least favorite because I've only completed fourth wing and now I'm reading the fake out so give me your answers down below I'm trying to get back into it this question is relevant now and it asks are we actually gonna start traveling next year we're gonna start traveling in like six nine days which is exciting but we are going on our first trip out of Ohio our longest trip it's kicking off our traveling. We're going to a campground in Georgia and then going to a campground in Florida. And then in 2025, we'll start actually like going cross country, heading west, like going to do some cool stuff. We're doing a little mac and cheese cheeky nug mukbang while we finish the rest of this Q&A together. So I've been holding off on some of these questions because I want you to answer them too. Okay. If you could be any form of potato, what would it be? Sweet potato. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I think I would be a waffle fry. 
Why? Because I like the, the waffleness. What is the scariest part about living in a bus? I know it's going to happen, no matter what it is, of us possibly breaking down and something going wrong. Mm -hmm. It's more of like, you know, the it's, an, it's an, yeah, it's not, not if, it's when it's going to happen. Mm -hmm. I'm just hoping that it just doesn't happen at our lowest points. That's well, not how that shit works though. Yeah, no. Currently, because I think this might change depending on like where we're at and what we're doing. Currently, I think it's waiting for something inside to break. Like for example, we just found a new leak in the bus after <laughs> living in it for like seven months. And I'm like, oh fuck, okay. I think like water inside is one of my biggest fears. I just don't want our entire house to flood. <laughs> When is the roof gonna be done? This is funny because he's been texting me today about the roof all day. I think it'll be done this Saturday, so. We'll see about that. Do you feel less stressed? living in the bus than you did living in an apartment. A thousand percent. The amount of calm that I feel while living in this bus so far has been mm -hmm. a complete 180 from when we were in the apartment, honestly. Mm -hmm. I definitely feel way less stressed. My like nervous system, I feel like has completely reset since living in the bus. Even though there's been like stressful times and we've been working a lot since living in the bus to like get things done, but I think it's just like a different type of stress or a different type of feeling. The more things you have, the more stressed you're gonna be because then you gotta clean it. You gotta take care of it. You gotta pay for it. You gotta wash it. There's just so many things. So I'm like, if I only have two cups, like how much dishes can we really pile up? What's some advice you'd give to people who want to live in a bus? Just go for it, honestly. Definitely do your research on everything as much as you possibly can. Just stop waiting. For example, me, I finally decided like, okay, I'm done waiting. I'm just gonna fucking do it. We found Becky on Facebook Marketplace. But once you finally decide that for yourself, like manifestations and stuff like that, when you're like, this is what I want and it's no longer something that I want, it's something that is going to happen, like doors and things Will start opening up and everything will fall into place like a little puzzle. But more on like the realistic advice as well. I would say have no timeline and try to have a budget, but also just throw that out the window because you're gonna take way longer than you think you're going to and you're gonna spend way more money than you think you're going to. So save as much as you possibly can. <laughs> Where is Kitty's favorite spot to hang out in the bus? If it's her kitty corner, you made Al cry. <laughs> I mean, I would say it's a little bit of the kitty corner. I think it's the bed underneath the closet or it's underneath the oven that we have yet to do the drawers for. <laughs> so. I was gonna say, it's kind of sad. Like as cats do, they make their own spaces. Like mm -hmm. as much as you make a spot for them, they're gonna find some crevice to lay in, but what's sad about it is all the crevices or spots that Kitty has declared won't be spots. Mm -hmm. She also likes to lay in our electronic bin because mm -hmm. the pantry's open. She won't be able to lay there. And also she walks- uh, yeah. From the bed to the pantry where the electronics drawer is at and like walks on it then gets on the counter. And then like and, we'll sit in the counter and look mm -hmm. out the window and stuff like that. But she uses that so she doesn't have to jump onto the counter. She jumps on the bed kind of thing. So I'm like, yeah, once we have the door on the pantry, she won't be able to walk across. So she'll have to find like new spots, but mm -hmm. her kitty corners obviously her favorite because that's where she gets fed that's where like stuff happens so she'll lay up there and recently she's been sleeping on our the dog couch like we made the couch for the dogs but in the morning i wake up and she's like sleeping Sleep on the couch on she can lay wherever she wants to we need to go check on our laundry because it is about time to go it's like 7 30 the dogs usually eat at seven we need to fold these clothes kind of like fold our bedding together that way we can go home back to the vlog. We just did not finish it. We had dinner. We had to get our stuff together. We had to get everybody home. To be honest, it's been a few days since that. And we're gonna finish the Q&A. We're gonna wrap up this vlog. That's what we're doing here today. I went to the last. I know last time I did it, I was like, this is probably the last market that I'll do in Ohio before we leave. And I really did think it was going to be. But I stopped by the Nacho Mama's Craft Market simply because Lauren Alexander Design posted on her stories that she had something new at her booth. And I was like, you're kidding. I need that in my life. I went all the way to the market, literally just walked around the six rooms at the key there were so many makers there just to find Lauren, just to grab these things and then leave because yesterday was really busy anyways and I didn't have time to look through everything. And I'm so excited to have them. Like this is our coaster and this is like a giant hot pot coaster type vibe. You know, like you take a pan or a pot or something out of the air fryer or a little pan. Like we don't know where to put it. If this is not the cutest thing you've ever seen. Like this is adorable and they match. I was actually sad because I guess I showed up too late. She had a whole stack of these bright ones to match our coasters. Got there, this was the last one. And so I just got this like neutral one because I thought it was still cute 
it looks like little rocks and like pebbles and stuff. I don't know. But I was so sad that there was only one left of these ones. So we have one like neutral, one colorful for our pots and air fryer pans. Now that you're caught up, we will wrap up this vlog. And like I said, we will finish this q and I'm pretty sure I mentioned this in the other video, but there's some questions that I don't want to go too deep into because I think they deserve like their own video. It's so hard to go in depth with some of these because I'm like, girl, I could talk for 40 minutes about this. This could be a whole podcast episode, right? For example, this question of how do I manage my jobs, many of them, and being an adult and like having the pets and stuff like that. I feel like I could talk forever about all of the things that help me, but I will just be honest that I don't want it to come across that I'm like promoting this grind because I'm so against the grind. I'm so against capitalism and grinding and any of that, but I can also hold space and recognize like sometimes you got to do what you got to do for the things that you want in life. And if I'm willing and able to do that, like I'm going to. So I try to look at it as like a season of life. And by no means am I going to be like grinding as hard as you guys have probably seen me grind the past like two or three years for the rest of my life. Absolutely not. I was doing that for a purpose. We have things that we have to get done on the bus. We have projects that need completed. We need money and like I'm willing to bust my ass because it's getting me to my end goal of traveling in the bus to like fulfill my dreams, if that makes sense. That's the short answer. I want to talk about this more because I can at least give you tips of how I've managed it. I just want to be very clear that I'm not promoting working your ass off and not having any time for self-care. It's not my favorite thing in the whole world. I don't even like that I do it. Gotta do what I gotta do. So are Alexis and I still going to have book club members on the podcast for happy hour? Yes. I feel bad and I texted Alexis obviously saying that I feel bad that we've just like put the podcast on the back burner, especially at the beginning of October when I was doing Vlogtober. Like there's no way that I could do it and now it's into November and so I'm just like, let's just reset in December. I am a started on a Monday, started on a Sunday girly. I can't just like pick up in the middle of the month. So we're just going to pick it up at the beginning of December and we're going to be back. We still have a happy hour episode that we already filmed with one of y'all just like sitting there waiting to be posted six months ago. Now that things are a little more stable in terms of me, <laughs> mentally. If you want to be a guest on happy hour on the non-negotiable podcast, I will link the form down below. You just fill out your information so we can reach out to you because yes, we're going to be doing that every single month. There's going to be a new one of you guys. Do we have Wi-Fi on Becky? Cannot remember for the life of me. We do not, at least right now. We're still like up in the air. We haven't officially started like traveling in the middle of bumfuck nowhere where we won't have cell service in the future. We would want a Starlink, but right now we're just using like hotspot because everywhere that we're staying still has cell service. So we have no issue getting service. Once we start actually cross country traveling and we're in the middle of I don't know, the mountains, that's when we would have to figure something out. <laughs> we'll cross that bridge when we get there. Advice for post-grad life when you have no idea what to do with your life. To be honest, take your fucking time. There's no timeline or deadline that you have to figure it out. So if you don't know, that's an opportunity for you to explore and be creative and just try things. And I think that's beautiful. I think not knowing what to do is better. I think sometimes things just kind of like fall into place. Like I found a really good job with Trek and like what I'm doing, not planning for it. Didn't have any idea what I wanted to do post grad, but also things might not happen right away. And that's okay too, because again, there's no deadline. I think taking the time to explore yourself and figure out what you're passionate about and what you'd be willing to do for you know the next five to ten years of your life takes time there's no way that I I could figure that out as a senior in high school before I entered college like I hate that you have to figure this out and decide what you're majoring in because like I'm barely 18. My frontal lobe has not even developed yet. How am I supposed to know what I want to do? I really didn't start feeling like myself and like I knew myself until 25 until my frontal lobe developed and then I was like I just take your fucking time. Try things, travel, job hop. My main advice would be to take the pressure off of yourself to have it figured out and enjoy the season of life that you're in that you get to be whimsical and spontaneous and be exploring everything around you. So we mentioned in a recent vlog that Bela isn't fixed and they were curious why. We have just been waiting for her to be fully grown and now that she is two, like usually she's at that age that she is fully grown but she's, to be honest, like small, like she's on the small side of Golden's. So we've been kind of holding out seeing if she's going to have a second growth spurt. We also wanted to wait until she had like her first or two heat cycles. But now that she's hit two, it's something that is going to be like in the near future us scheduling to get her fixed. How do we plan to meet new people when we're on the road other than at campsites? Um, to be honest, like that's most of it. We plan on meeting people at different events that we go to. Like there's a whole community of people that travel this like nomadic and schooly van life lifestyle. So there's a lot of events that you can go to across the country to meet people. Or maybe we're climbing at a climbing gym and we meet people. Like maybe we're 
just parked in the same Walmart parking lot. Like, <laughs> I think that's what makes it fun. And I think that's all that we'll answer in this video. Like I said, I, I see some really good ones that I really want to dive deep in, but we haven't done a Q&A like this in a while. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you have more questions or you want to be a part of the next Q&A next time we do this at some point, follow me on Instagram. That's where I always post the little question boxes if you ever wanted to ask a question, it's over there. And I will be honest, you're about to see me in this same fit because I needed to close out this vlog so that we can start the next one. And the next one is so exciting. Our electric is hooked up and our fridge is installed right here. Like I'm looking at it. So you guys will get to see all of that in the next vlog. I hope you're excited and I hope you guys enjoyed this one. I love you guys so much, more than you'll ever know, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.